Good day to you guys, CJ Patrick here again and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a lightsaber effect in Blender EV. First, we are going to be using a Bezier curve for our base lightsaber and to simulate the movement of the lightsaber, we are going to use a wave modifier with the simple settings and to complete the effects, of course, I am going to show you how we can achieve this effect using a procedural texture. And after that, of course, we are going to save this blend file and reuse it in our animated scene. First, I'm going to import it in our animated character here. And last, I'm going to show you how you can apply this 3D lightsaber effect in your own footage like this. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you are missing a lot of things in my channel. So if I were you, press the subscribe button. So without further ado, follow me on Instagram and let's start the tutorial. Now, first thing in our viewport here, I'm just going to delete everything in the viewport and go here. And let's add in a bezier curve. Let's zoom in a bit and tap into edit mode. Right click to that and here where it says spline type, let's select poly. And I'm just going to rotate this along Y. So press R, Y, negative 90. And let's drag this upward like this while holding control. And make sure that it snap in our 3D grid like this. Now go here in our curve setting here, under geometry, let's set the depth to about 0 0.03, okay, that's looking fine. Now next, I'm going to shrink this top vertice here by pressing Alt-S like this, and just a tiny bit like this. And let's create a control to these two vertices here by pressing Control H and that will bring up an options here. So let's select let's just select hook to new object. That will bring out an empty control in our viewport like this, and you can control it like that. So let's select our curve again and let's add in another one here. So press Ctrl H, hook to new object, and tap back to object mode and let's see if it works. Okay, working perfectly fine. Now if you want, you can change the appearance of our control here and I'm just going to select cube and I'm just going to shrink down the size to about 12 like that and the other one as well and shrink it down like this. And let's zero out the transform values for these two control. Select both of that and control A and select all transforms to deltas. Okay. And that's basically it for our base lightsaber. Don't forget to rename our curve here. In this case, I'm just going to rename this to saber for now. Okay. And of course, our empty control as well. Next, I'm just going to add in a circle here. Tap into edit mode and press F to fill in the faces there. And let's scale it right about there. This is going to be the brightest part of the lightsaber. Okay. Now next, I'm just going to parent this circle to our empty control right here. So let's select our circle here first and then select the empty control, control P and select object. Now let's test it if it follows. Very nice. And next, I'm just going to add in another circle here. And this is going to be our simple handle. It doesn't really need to be complex. I'm just going to model this very simple like this. Really, really quick. Now after that, I'm just going to parent this two empty control here to our handle that we just created. So select this two empty here and select this handle, control P and select object. Now let's try it. It follows. Now next, let's quickly add a movement to this by adding a wave modifier. So let's select our curve here and go here in our modifiers tab. As you can see, these are the hook that we just created earlier. So let's just hide this for now. And I'm just going to add a wave modifier here. Now if I hit play, it will move like this. We don't actually want that. So I'm just going to click the normals here and in the height, 
I'm just going to narrow down this to a negative value. Just a little movement like this. You can just eyeball it if you want. Right there. And I think this is perfect for now. Now let's go ahead and bump up our speed right here. And maybe tweak it a little bit more. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead in our shading tab here. And let's start adding an effect to our saber here by adding a procedural texture. First, I'm just going to enable the bloom. Okay. I'm just going to darken the background here. Now in advance, I'm just going to flash the node setup here in the screen. And this is the setup that we are aiming for for this. And now go back to our shading window here and click new. And I'm just going to rename this to Saber Material. And let's delete this principal BSD up. We're not going to be using that. And I'm just going to add in a mix shader and flag this in the surface. Next will be transparent BSDF, an emission shader, and I'm going to connect the transparent BSDF to the top of the mix shader and the emission to the bottom. Next set of node will be color ramp node and plug this into the factor of mix shader and I'm just going to add a noise texture, plug this in the factor of the color ramp. And if you have node wrangler enabled, just control T to bring in the mapping node. Now next, let's zoom in in our color ramp here. And I'm just going to drag this all the way here. And maybe tweak the noise scale up to about like this. And the detail, of course, I'm going to set this to 15. And the distortion to about like this. Okay. Now in the emission color here, I'm just going to set this to a bright orange like this and set the strength to about 50 and that's looking great so far now if we go here in our viewport and try to drag our control here and it looks like this we don't actually want that because later in our vfx shot we are going to manually animate this we don't want it to be like this when we move it so i'm just gonna go here in our texture coordinate here and instead of generated i'm just gonna switch this to uv and go here in our curve settings and i'm just gonna check this use uv for mapping all right now if we grab it okay now maybe let's tweak the color up a bit more and maybe this is the perfect time for us to enable our transparency option so Press N in the keyboard and switch the blend mode to alpha blend. Okay. Now I'm just going to add in another set of node. Shift A and add a gradient texture. Another color ramp node. And I am just going to duplicate our mapping here. And connect the mapping vector to the gradient texture. And because we are using the same texture coordinate, I'm just going to plug the UV here to our mapping vector. Okay, and don't forget to connect our gradient texture in our color ramp factor here. And let's mix this together with our noise texture using a mix RGB and place it here. The noise texture will be on the top, and the gradient texture set of nodes will be on the bottom. And I'm just gonna set this to multiply and drag this all the way to one. Now it looks like this in the viewport. Let's fix that by switching the position of the color ramp here. All right. And we are going to animate this later using the X axis in the mapping. And you got an idea now where this is going. Now let's go ahead and animate our texture here. I'm just going to drag the corner here to bring in a new window. I'm just going to switch this to timeline. Now go to frame 1 and we are going to set a keyframe in x-axis here in our noise texture mapping. I'm just going to press I while hovering over my mouse cursor to that. Just select this so you can see the keyframe there. Now I'm going to go to frame 50 here and I'm just going to drag this in negative value like this. Negative 10 maybe. And let's see how it goes. Perfectly fine. 
maybe we can increase the strength of the emission here. Let's change that to 100. Okay. What I'm going to do next is duplicate our lightsaber here to add another layer of effects. So Shift D and with that selected, I'm just going to go here in our curve settings under geometry. I'm going to increase the size of that just a little bit like this. Okay. And now before changing the settings here, don't forget to duplicate our material here by clicking this icon right here. Okay. That will change. Now I'm just going to change the color of this to about red like this and change the emission to 500. I want it to be bright. And let's change some settings here. So we have a little bit of a variation. I'm just going to drag the white handle here and maybe change the noise scale down to about 10. Let's see how it goes. Looking fine so far. How about that? Now let's add another one. So I'm going to select that again. Shift D and go here in our curve setting. I am going to increase that down for this one. And with that still selected, I'm going to tab into edit mode and click this top right here. And I am going to scale that by pressing Alt S and it will scale it like this. All right. Now again, I'm just going to duplicate the material for that by clicking this icon. And now we can change the setting for that. Now I want it to limit in this area only. So what I'm going to do is just drag the X location in gradient mapping here, right here. Like just like that is enough. Now, of course, I'm just going to change the settings for this one. Just going to increase the scale of the noise texture here. And now if we play it, all right. I th now I think we are done here now. So the next thing to do is just save this blend file and ready for reusing it in our next scene. So control S and save it to where you want it to be saved. Now just to demonstrate to you, I open up my animated scene here. I am going to demonstrate to you how we can use our lightsaber effect in our animated scene right here. So what I'm going to do is go here in file, select a pen, and I am going to navigate to where I save my lightsaber blend file and click that. And I am going to select collection and I'm going to select this. Now, as you can see, it's in our viewport already. Now I'm just going to hide this for now so we can see it better. So now with our lightsaber imported in our viewport, I'm going to parent this to the hand of our character here. Now with that already in place, make sure to select our handle, select the hand rig there, control P and set parent to bone. So now if we play it, all right, looking pretty nice. Now next, let's apply this lightsaber to our VFX shot. So now I open up a new scene here. I'm just going to delete everything. And I'm going to file, import, import images as plane. And now I am going to bring in my VFX shot in our viewport like this. And I am going to rotate that along X by 90 degree like that. And next I am going to bring in our lightsaber. So go here in file. This time select a pen and navigate again to where you save your lightsaber. And select that, select collection, and select this. All right. Now I'm just going to switch to shading tab here. And with our footage selected, I'm just going to delete the principal BSDF here and connect this node to the surface. And there you go. Now I'm just going to drag this here a bit, just like this. And let's bring in our camera here really quick. And let's zero out the transforms of this at the Y to zero and the Z to zero as well and the X to 90 degree. Now press zero to switch to camera view and I am just going to drag this along Y to fit our footage in the camera view like this. All right, that's perfectly fine. Okay, next let's delete the handle of the lightsaber here. We're not going to be using that and go here in our render properties tab. Let's check the bloom. If you remember, we created a circle 
right here and this is going to be the brightest part of our lightsaber so I'm just gonna select that and create new material to that and I'm just gonna switch this to emission shader like that and switch the color to up to red like this and I am going to increase that really really bright like this maybe a thousand now if we test it very nice now I'm just gonna switch this window to timeline like that now next i'm going to try to match our lightsaber here in the footage like this and with that in place i'm just gonna click this button right here and we are going to manually animate this using the empty control that we created earlier so i'm just gonna speed up the video from here And after a bunch of keyframing, I came up with this one. And of course, I tweak all the settings that we just created. You can do that also. Just don't forget to put your own personality on it. Just be creative. So that's all about it, guys. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learn a lot, achieve a lot. I hope you can use what you learn in this video. And I would like to say thank you for you if you subscribe now. And of course, I would like to say thank you to my subscribers who are very supportive. And, and I appreciate those kind words you say in the comments. And I noticed that some of you are beginners in Blender. So I am currently recording a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a character from ideas sketching and modeling and finally animating it and rendering it in Eevee so yeah see you in my next video bye